Welcome to Module 6. In this lesson, you'll learn about structural framing and how to create steel columns. In Revit, structural framing refers to a frame containing beams and braces, but is commonly thought of as a timber, steel or concrete frame comprising of columns, beams and bracing. A fabrication model may additionally add structural connections and other secondary framing systems. Go ahead and open up Project A. The project continues from Module 5.3. In this particular lesson, we're going to focus on the placement of steel columns. The steel columns will be placed from the first floor up to the third floor. So let's begin by opening up our structural plan 01 first floor. We'll then focus in on our first grid placement, which is going to be A2. To begin the structural column command, we'll select the structure ribbon, and on the structure ribbon, we'll select structural column. Note on the context ribbon, we're placing a vertical column, and we're going to tag this column on placement. So let's now go ahead and load our family. We'll select load family. And in this example, we're going to use a universal column section from the UK library. It's worth noting with Revit that Revit will differentiate between a section that's used as a column and a section that's intended to be used as a beam or a brace. All the columns are found under the structural columns folder. All of the beams and braces are found under structural framing. So as I've said, Revit differentiates between a section used for a column and a section used for a beam or a brace. As we're placing structural columns, let's open up the structural columns folder. In the structural columns folder, we'll open up steel. And here we'll go to our British standard folder. And we'll select UC universal columns. And then we can click open. We will then see a catalog file. The catalog file is typically shown when we have steel sections with various different sizes. So here we've selected one family, which is a UC universal column. But here you can see in the dialog box that we're displaying every section size for a universal column. Note in these dialog boxes, you can hold down a control key and then roll the mouse wheel to zoom out or zoom in. In this particular example here, we're going to select a 203 by 52. And we'll hold down our control key and we'll also pick a 254 by 89. Once we have these two families selected, we'll go ahead and select OK, and they're now loaded into the Revit project. Notice in the properties palette in the type selector, we can now select our universal column section type. And in this example here, we're going to use this type, which is 254 by 254 by 89. On the options bar, we're going to ensure that this column is placed to a height of the third floor. And now you can see that we have our steel section on our cursor. Once again, the space bar will allow us to orientate this steel column. Now my intention here is to place this on the intersection of grid A2. Notice as I move over the grids, it displays nearest and nearest and it highlights both of the grids. And I can simply left click now to place down the column. As the column is placed, you'll notice that a tag is also placed with the column. We'll then continue to place out columns. So we'll have another column placed on the intersection of grid three and A, and then grid four, grid five, and grid six. And we'll then move down to grid B. And of course, we'll do the same intersections there. Notice we don't have to be zoomed in to place these. As long as the grids are highlighted and intersected, then we can place down these columns. We've got two more to be placed out here and some more columns in this area of the structure now the structure actually steps back here so we just need the columns placed out on this grid here yeah and on this grid here now there is a slightly more automated method of placing out these columns we can use at grids so in this example here I'm going to select at grids I'll pick this grid here and then I can hold down my control key and pick these grids and you can now see that three structural columns are placed. I can then click finish to finalize this command. And to finish the design off, we'll place the last three structural columns on these grid locations here. Okay, so let's now review our column placement in 3D. 
So we'll go ahead and switch from the first floor to the 3D view, and we can now see our steel columns placed out. To release the column command, we can select modify on the context ribbon. And what we need to do here is just ensure that we're using the same material as the rest of our structure. So to do this, we'll go ahead and select one of our columns. We'll right mouse click here and select all instances visible in view. In the properties palettes, you'll notice that the material is an instance driven parameter. So here we're going to associate this to a global parameter and here we'll select steel. And of course, now you'll see all of our steel columns update. Another thing we can take a look at here is going to be detail level. So let's go from the 3D view and return back to the 01 first floor plane. I'm going to zoom up on one of these steel columns. And we can see here that the steel column is represented with three lines. On the quick access toolbar, you'll note here that we can switch the display from thin lines to thick lines. And in a coarse level of detail, you'll notice that the column is placed just as a symbolic view. So we have three heavy lines to represent a column. If I now just toggle off the thin lines again by clicking the thin line button, notice on the view control toolbar, I can now change the display. So here we have three levels of detail that are built into Revit. We have coarse, medium, and fine. And these levels of detail very closely follow the scale shown here. So for example, if I change my scale to one to 10 in here, I can then go to my level of detail and then perhaps choose fine. In a fine level of detail, you'll notice that we can see the thickness of the flange and the web, and also the fillet radii that occurs between the flange and the web. If I change the level of detail to medium, you can see now it suppresses those fillet radii. So the idea of this is when we're creating planes, we'll select the level of detail that matches the scale. So in this case, if we went to a coarse level of detail and we set our scale to 100, you can now see here that we have a good level of detail for this particular scale of the plane. When we look at details on our steelwork a bit later on, when we're putting in structural connections, that's when we'll use a medium or a fine level of detail. Okay, so that concludes this first module. Let's go ahead and save our project ready for module 6.1.